colorblind person does not explain what they see. They explain what others tell them they're unable to see. It is hard to explain my life to you because I'm unaware how it is to live your life and I've only lived mine. But what uh, I'm aware of at least is that I have difficulties and I view the world rather differently than the majority. We are a group of people who does that and clever minds call us dyscalculic. The word dyscalculia originates from Latin and means bad at counting, and we are. Dyscalculia enable us in, is disable us in anything math related. When I tell people that I have dyscalculia and how it influences my understanding of numbers or the lack of that exactly, they always tend to ask me, so how many percentages of the world's population has it? <laughs> but for you guys, I wrote it down. Dyscalculia. The percentage of the population with developmental dyscalculia is estimated to be between 3 to 6 percent or 1 in 20 individuals. That is a similar percentage to that for dyslexia. If the ones in this room have heard about dyslexia, the disability in reading and understanding languages before, could you please raise your hand? Yeah, I'm obviously not going to count that, <laughs> but you can, you can take a look around in the room because now I'm going to ask you how many before the event today have heard about dyscalculia? Okay, there's some. <laughs> it is rare that I meet some in my, someone in my life who actually has heard about it before. A lot of dyscalculic people struggle with time. Are bad at reading time, estimating time, maybe completely unable to do so. And I'm one of those. I have absolutely no sense of time. How fast it goes, how slow it goes, if it goes. I learned to read the analog clock somehow when I was 18 and I still struggle with translating the analog clock to the digital and vice versa. Is it in the left side of the brain or the right side of the brain? These are questions I get rather often when I tell people that I'm dyscalculic. I'm quite open about my diagnosis, and I tell people in work relations where it could occur as a problem if they did not know about my world without numbers. But these questions is not only just amongst the most frequently asked, they are also amongst the most hurtful. Questions like these makes me a concept. It is a curiosity into knowing the concept, the disability, the disease. It is not a curiosity based on wanting to know the human. I don't know about you guys, but I don't identify myself more with my brain than with my right foot, my thumb, or my heart. It was a big thing getting the paper which told an academic church that I'm terms that I'm rightfully bad at numbers because it made me feel like I again was a part of the group where I wanted to be the most average. So, okay, so how to go about navigating in a world where everything originates from math because that is what we do. Everything in this world is built of systems in order for it to run. And even though I live in this bubble with no numbers, I still live on the same planet as you guys and need to figure out how to navigate in it. I know it takes Isn't She Lovely and Superstition by Stevie Wonder to get from my home to school. So these are my short morning bike ride playlist in order to ensure I'm on time to class. I know that yellow in general means that something is on sale or cheaper than normal, so everything in my shopping basket has a yellow label on it in order to keep somehow track on my spatial student budget. I remember my birthday because everyone else remembers the terrible 9-11 event and therefore that number seemed to stick. There is no systems in which numbers I remember and which I don't. I remember my childhood's best friend's parents' phone number because that was the number I pressed every day when I was a child in order to make playdates. But I don't remember my mom's birthday or her age. It took me more than a year to remember the pin, the pin code to my credit card and on bad math days that number can vanish completely from my memory. I compare 
my disability with everyone else's um, relation to their second or third language. When you speak in your mother tongue, you do not think of grammar, but when you write or read in your second or third language, this is something you have to think more carefully about. I have to think more carefully about anything intoxicated with math. Yeah. <laughs> I still today question whether I'm rightfully dyscalculic or if I'm just plain stupid. Because that is the feeling you have when you have panic attacks just with the mere thought of going shopping, or someone asks you to play a game that includes a pair of dice, or you forget your age or the size of your shoes, or when you're hyperventilating and sweating trying to read the bus schedule as fast as possible without people noticing that I have no clue of what I'm looking at. <laughs> it is... <laughs> um, it is following a recipe ending up cooking weird food like food. It is, uh, it is taking the bus the wrong direction. Everything that has the slightest amount of math and dyscalculic people has to think of twice. I'm not able to count how many times I've cried about this ridiculous condition because I'm not even able to count. But I'm still given a life and I have decided that I don't want to spend it on being focused on what I'm not able to or what disables me or what I'm not capable of doing. I want to focus on what I'm able to and maybe what I'm able to because of my condition. Yeah. I have digged into why I like people. Who are my friends? Who do I admire? What do they give to my life and what do I give to them? It is hard for everyone to tell why people like them, but it's obvious to me why we like others and it's obvious to me why I like my friends. I learned something from them. I learned something from, I learned from surrounding me with people that are different to me because I believe that learning and understanding happens in the gap between you and me called personality. I don't think we, we learn by surrounding us with people that are identical to ourselves. And I don't, I don't like you because you are just like me. I like you because I see something in you. I wanted to fit into the box of average, but in retrospect, I did not want it to be average. I just wanted to be able to control where I stuck out from the mass. I did not want it that to be the lack of math abilities. It doesn't really have that X factor to it. <laughs> I'm certain that dyscalculia is not my personality, but I cannot run away from it being a part of my personality. I have a piece of paper with my diagnosis written on it somewhere hidden in a locker, but it does not hit my disability in the same locker. There's a huge difference in what you write in your diary hidden underneath your bed and what you post on Instagram, Twitter and pro uh, Facebook. <coughs> Everything that we think that people admires about us, envies and likes about us, we put online and what we think we are, what ashames us and what embarrasses us that we put somewhere hurtful. Somehow these two polars is dragging us apart, but what happens if they one day will be completely detached from each other? There will be no human, there will be no person, there will be no individual. <laughs> A clever friend of mine told me that we compare our inner states with everyone's outer state. Her grandmother had told her that, so the concept is not something new. I just see a certain increasing danger in having split lives. <laughs> everything, everything that we put online is very fragile and can crash any time, and what we have on the other side is very hurtful, and I don't want to be either or of them. But wait, what makes a person interesting is the jigsaw puzzle of friends and family and personality and opinions and histories and scars and lovers and dreams, all of it shapes us. My hope is that we, my hope is that we strive to embrace our entire selves and that the people around us determine what they like about us or not. In the end, it takes a huge amount of energy to hide that an enormous amount of Smurf collection you have at home, so why not find someone who finds that side of you interesting? Of course, us with diagnosis on our weirdnesses has a leap in identifying the puzzle pieces that fit in the jigsaw puzzle of our personalities. But I would encourage you to go through your headaches and your secrets and review them and figure out if they're put in that box merely because you think they and everyone else would put them in that category. 
I want you to embrace that. Embrace your weirdnesses. Whether it's a sudden lust for running an Ironman, or a passion for plans, or an obsession with systems, or anything, you want to call it turquoise, embrace it. But remember that, and remember, that these are just a small puzzle piece in the entire creation of you. They will never be only you. I may not, I may not have any sense of numbers or any relation, any relationship to it. But identifying that exact piece of me has helped me to constantly strive to look for the bigger picture. Because in the end, it's not the single puzzle piece that matters. It is in the end, it is um, the bigger picture. Thank you for your time. <laughs>